Nice. Hey, really quick disclaimer. As a medical assistant, I do have to be very careful when I make these videos because I don't want anybody getting hurt. You should have the proper protection when you're doing any kind of fix and electricity is not a game. If you have a pacemaker, if you have anything electronic, if you have any metal implants, getting electrocuted can cause extra, 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 extra damage on top of how lethal it may be in the first place. If you don't feel comfortable working on electrical projects or any kind of repairs, don't do it. Hire a professional, especially if you live in a place where it's illegal to do so. Again, this is all for educational and slightly entertainment purposes. These are for theoretical knowledges and it's not on me if you decide to go burn your house down because you wanted to play with some electricity. Good morning, evening, or afternoon, whichever one is happening to you currently. Today we're talking about wiring in a fixture where the panel wires that feed the circuit are coming in from the fixture rather than from the receptacle where your switch is going to be. You're gonna have to wire in a switch and that is called a switch loop. So in a second, I'm gonna show you the diagram just so you have a theoretical knowledge. Again, it's gonna be drawn by me, so don't expect any fancy animation or anything like that but it's just for those visual learners who need to know where the, you know, where the wires go, where they're gonna be connected, and essentially what path the circuit is gonna be traveling to as far as the voltage, stay with me. So without further ado, let's get to the illustration and I'm gonna show you exactly what's going on in said circuit. And here we have our illustration or diagram of a switch loop. In the bottom left, we have our panel. I apologize that it kind of looks like a safe. On the far right, we have our switch. And in the dead center at the top, we have our light fixture. This red line going across is just the ceiling line for a point of reference. So super simple, let's go through this quickly. This white wire here is our panel's neutral. We'll start with that because it's the most simple. It's going to come into the fixture and you're going to connect any neutrals that are coming from each of the sockets. You're going to connect them to the panel's neutral. With this fixture and the one that I installed, there were two sockets. Therefore, there are two neutrals. You're going to connect them both into a wire nut or a WAGO into the panel's neutral. And that's it. That's done. It's over. Next, we've got our ground that's going to go into the fixture. It's either going to be connected to a copper wire that's coming from the fixture, like in this case, or there could be a screw or a nut or something to fasten the ground to the fixture itself. If that's the case, then you're gonna make a little spot because you're also gonna have to connect the ground that's gonna come from the switch. And finally, and probably the most concerning and the most easy to mess up if you're not paying attention, is your black wire or your hot wire. This is where the voltage is coming in, so pay attention. This is gonna come up and into the fixture. I just put it up at the top so it's out of the way, but your wire nut or your WAGO, whatever you have, is going to connect it from the panel to one of the wires in a single pole light switch. It really doesn't matter because there's not going to be any neutrals on your light switch. They're both gonna be hot wires. So from the panel, this voltage is going to come in and some people will put two wires that are black insulated because they're both going to be hot. If you happen to use Romex because it's just you just happen to have one and it's cheaper, then this wire could be white and one could be black. If you're going to use the white one to connect to the panel, then just know that you have to label this by wrapping it with black tape so that people know that this is a live hot voltage wire even if it is white. Otherwise, you can just use a black wire and make it easier on yourself and whoever else is working on it. The other wire is going to be connected to the hots inside of the fixture. So now that we have a clear understanding of where everything's going, I'm going to use a golden color just to show you the direction or how the circuit's flowing. So from the panel, we're going to have the voltage come up and it's going to go traveling down the wire that's going to be wired into the switch and it's going to come in here. Now when you flip that switch up, it's going to then complete the circuit 
sending voltage to your fixture. And that's what's going to send power to however many lights are in it. So if there's one light or two light sockets, whatever you got, that's what's going to power those on. When the switch is on, you're going to have those neutrals that are in the fixture bringing the voltage back to the panel. So that's how it's going to go in and around. It's going to go up through the switch. You flick up. It's going to continue, send that voltage to the bulbs, and then it's going to be returned through the neutrals down back to the panel. And that is a circuit. It goes up, it goes through, it comes back. It goes up, it goes through, and it comes back. That's how it goes from the grid. That's how it goes from the grid to a power line or a power pole, whatever utility poles near your house that is delivering power to you. There's a transformer there, and it's basically a hot and a neutral, hot, neutral, hot, neutral, hot, neutral, all the way until it gets to you. And even going through your house, everything is circuit. So if you have a basic theoretical understanding of circuits like this, then you shouldn't be afraid of anything. Now, once again, you should not be touching electricity. This is all for theoretical knowledge. If you happen to be a starting electrician or anything like that, or if it's a very basic circuit with very low voltage, um, this is just showing you what I did. So yeah, let's move on to the IRL stuff. Before we get going, I've already pulled down the light fixture and replaced it. So it's not gonna be me pulling anything out of the package. It's gonna be super straightforward and me more going over how it's done versus what's being done. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any footage of me pulling it down, but you can assume that the fan was falling apart, the base, the ring was falling apart, the chain that actually controls both the light and the fan mechanisms were both broken and kind of snagged. So it was just a mess, it had to go, and again, everything's out of my pocket. So if you could go ahead and subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it because again, all my tools and all of the materials are out of my pocket. Worst case scenario, if I have to charge anybody for anything, it'll just be for the cost of the materials. Otherwise, it's all from me. This is the perfect time to test out my okay. ET310 by Klein. And that is, there is a socket adapter that goes into the socket of the light that gets moved into a th two to three prong switch and then you're gonna put your transmitter here, and then we're gonna go down to the basement and check which circuit these lights are on so we can kill complete power down through the conduit to the switch that we'll see in a minute. But for now, we wanna make sure we're safe, and also, there's a piece of this conduit missing. I put some electrical tape just so people know that there is a wire in here, or two wires here, but um, the insulations on those wires are okay otherwise, but I do not have permission to go putting a new conduit in. Now that we're at our breaker, we're gonna turn our receiver on. We're gonna make sure we give a fresh signal. And as you can see, that is our winner, just to be sure. And once we get the one that has our receiver screaming and we turn it off, there's now no issue. And if you wanna make sure, which is recommended by Klein, turn off your receiver, turn it on again, just to make sure you didn't get a false positive. And you're going to go slowly through however many circuits you have. Good. So as you can tell by the center light no longer being on, we have 100% knocked out the power for this circuit. However, just because of that does not mean everything is safe. So you wanna go in with a voltage tester and make sure everything is 100% dead. Fantastic. Now, if we follow the conduit of the fixture down the wall, past the smoke detector, by the door, we get to our switch. Now, this is a metal and you never know, things can happen from time to time. So you're gonna take your voltage tester and just make sure there's not a hot wire waiting to surprise you, as well as by the screws, because anything metal can be conductive. Well, uh, if it's a conductive metal. 
So if everything's looking good, next step is to bring that switch down and then we're going to take these screws off. And that's how you one hand it with a full rig because I actually have my receiver, my camera, and my light all in one. And if you take a look at the side up in there, you'll see that there's actually a black wire and a white wire. And so that's traveling up inside that conduit, which is why inside of there, I have marked the neutral wire with a black electrical tape signifying that it is a hot wire because when you do flip this switch, it's going to be power coming from the panel to power going to the fixture. There are no neutrals in here. And as you can see, even though there is a ground screw, there is no ground. That's what that green screw is in there. Remember that once you've installed your light fixture, put your bulbs back. Now what I did for her was I got her smart bulbs as well as an Amazon Echo fourth generation so that she can have voice activated lights in several rooms in the house. As somebody who is visually and physically disabled, it makes the most sense for her to be able to uh, call her lights before she gets into the room. Then you install your bulb back and I got to do to that with two hands, so give me a second. And the last step is to make sure that you clean up the area because you want to make sure you leave it either as it was or in better condition. And we got to go turn on the power and make sure everything is good. And that about does it. We have our Amazon device, we have smart bulbs all over the house, we have fire sticks all over the house, we have a new switch, a cleaned off cover plate for the switch, the circuit is now happy and healthy, the fixture is up, the trash that was in there before is all taken out and all gone, and it was minimal waste to the planet because I don't like to make a lot of garbage when I go. Gonna get my ladder, gonna grab my table and all my tools, and it's on to the next one. I'm out of here because she also wants me to install a faucet or a sink faucet in her bathroom because she got the landlord special and that thing let me tell you it sucks i've already changed out the two water supply lines for the sink but it's time to tackle the faucet itself so until next time work smart